Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very complex equation. I call it very complex because of the double cosine, you're going to realize why this would be considered complex. But anyways, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist and one of them is lecture videos, basically going over the basics of complex numbers, starting with the definition. Z equals A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers and I squared is equal to negative one. So what is I? Even though we don't have an I in this equation, we have it squared. Because I is defined to be the number whose square equals negative one, if you need a really concrete definition, or you can also say, okay, I is one of the square roots of negative one, because negative one has two square roots. I and, what's the other one? Negative I. Cool. Now, how do we solve something like this? Well, first of all, if you had something like cosine z equals one half, you could just say, okay, one half is the cosine of pi over three, cosine 60 degrees, right? And then uh, kind of go from there, right? And there's gonna be a consideration of different coordinates or what is it called, quadrants, first and fourth on the unit circle, so on and so forth. But this situation is very different and with the double cosine, things are double, doubly complex or doubly complex. Anyways, I just couldn't say it. How do we solve something like this? So here's what we need to do. Obviously cosine alpha equals negative one can be solved. So let's start with that. Cosine z set it equal to alpha. So we can solve an easier equation cosine alpha equals negative one. Before we get into the solution, I want to show you a graph of this function along with the horizontal line. And uh oh, they do not intersect. What is that supposed to mean? That means that Z values are not real. Of course, this channel is all about complex numbers. Wait a minute, doesn't complex numbers include real numbers? Yes, but kind of, we don't wanna include them. But anyways, they're included. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and solve this equation, which is a lot simpler, and then back substitute. Okay, cosine alpha equals negative one. How do you solve these kinds of equations? Draw a unit circle and you know the two-step problem solving strategy? Step one, read the problem. Step two, cry. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna draw a unit circle and then just identify the angle. Where is cosine negative? First of all, cosine you're gonna find on the horizontal axis or x-axis, right here and right here. But I want cosine to be negative, therefore my angle needs to end here. That's kind of like a, what is it called? Terminal something? I don't know, terminal angle, terminal something. So my angle is pi, or I guess you could call it 180 degrees as well. But I wanna stick to radians, because radians are cool. So from here, alpha is pi. But it can also be three pi, five pi, seven pi. Hmm, what does that mean? It means that I'm allowed to add multiples of two pi to this, which turns out to be the solutions are odd multiples of pi. And of course that makes sense because Pi, three pi, they all bring you to the exact same point. I can't use two pi or four pi. Uh, cosine, their cosine is not negative one. Their cosine will be positive one. Make sense? Cool. Now, what am I gonna do with this? Back substitute. What is alpha? Go back, if you don't remember, I forgot. Alpha is cosine z, great. So let's go ahead and set alpha to cosine z. So cosine z is equal to 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi. Okay, what is pi? 3.14 something, right? Great, what does that mean? Well, first of all, I forgot to tell you. Did I, did I say n is an integer? Well, I said multiples of 2 pi, hopefully you got that. But n is an integer, in case you didn't get it. When n is an integer, 2n plus 1 always becomes an odd integer. Makes sense? When you multiply by pi, you get an angle whose cosine is negative 1. So it's all good, but Houston, we have a problem. If you remember the graph, there was no intersection point. So we're not supposed to have any solutions. What are you talking about? Like you gave us an equation like this. Okay, we're not done yet, hold on, easy. This equation is not supposed to have solutions then? Hmm, what about n? n can be anything, right? n can be zero, n can be one, n can be negative, any integer is fine. n can be one million. But let's keep it small, right? Keep it simple, the case principle. So what, what happens if n is zero? If n is zero, you're gonna get cosine z, if n is zero, 
cosine z becomes pi. Wow, that was easy. What's the problem with that? Uh-oh. If z is real, cosine is supposed to be between negative 1 and 1. Remember that? If z is real. Make sure you pay attention to that statement. If z is real, then this must be true. Because this is not true, contrapositive, that means z is not real. Make sense? So that kind of coincides with the graph. So what am I supposed to do then? I can't just guess because it doesn't exist. Well, uh, I don't want to say it doesn't exist. It's just complex, non-real, okay? So how do you find z though? We have to use Euler's formula. Let's invoke the beautiful formula, tada. What is that? So cosine of theta is e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by 2. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from the following. e to the i theta, thanks to Euler, can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. You know what? This is, I think, the most beautiful equation in math. You could disagree totally, but you got to justify it, okay? I think this is a beautiful equation. It's just amazing, mind-blowing, spectacular, whatever you want to call it. But it's just, I don't know. I can't tell you enough about this. But from here... You can replace theta with negative theta, you're going to get cosine theta, and then negative sine theta, and then add them up, so on and so forth. Do some algebra, you're going to end up with this. Sine theta, you can find a similar equation. Now, what am I going to do with this? Replace theta with z, so cosine z is going to equal e to the iz minus e to the negative iz divided by 2, set it equal to pi. Awesome. Let's go ahead and solve this equation, shall we? So I want to go ahead and first multiply both sides by 2, 2 pi. And then use the reciprocal or the negative exponent rule, whatever. And then I get this. Now is the time for substitution. Call this W. All right. And then we're going to get the following. W minus 1 over W equals 2 pi. Nice. And then from here, we can multiply everything by W as before. Remember, I've done another problem today. And I think we kind of use the same idea, right? Solving a quadratic equation. Remember that? Hopefully, you've seen the other video anyways. Uh, w squared minus 1 equals 2 pi w. Let's put everything on the left. And then this is quadratic in w. Let's go ahead and solve for w then. w equals negative b, 2 pi, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 pi squared, minus plus 4. Nice. That gives us a positive discriminant. Beautiful. And then we can actually divide everything by 2. And that gives us pi plus minus the square root of pi squared plus 1. Here's the fun part. What is W? W is e to the iz. Okay, great. So let's set it equal to e to the iz and solve for z because that's our goal, right? So let's start with this. e to the iz equals pi plus square root of pi squared plus 1. Awesome. Now, what am I going to do? I need to natural log both sides. So iz from here is going to be ln pi plus the square root of pi squared plus 1. Notice that this is a real valued ln. By the way, I don't need double parentheses. And that means I'm just going to have to multiply both sides by negative i, divide by i. Uh -uh. We don't do that. That's old school. Multiply by negative i. And when you do, you're going to get something like this. That's going to be one of the answers. Isn't that cool? And then the, to find the other solution, you have to go with the minus sign. But if you go with the minus sign, you're going to have a problem. You know what the problem is? W squared plus 1, if you square root it, it's going to be greater than, I mean, sorry, not W squared, pi squared plus 1. Pi squared plus 1 is greater than pi squared, therefore, its square root is greater than the square root of pi squared, which is pi. In other words, this is negative. And because it's negative, when I natural log both sides, uh-oh, Houston will have a problem, uh, we can kind of write it like this. E to the iz can be written as the modulus of this times e to the power i times pi. And if you want to add multiples of um, 2n pi, whatever, let's leave it like, like this, okay? Let's keep it simple. And then when you do the natural logs, you're going to have a real valued natural log here because this is going to be a positive quantity. And then plus, you're going to get i pi. When you multiply finally by negative i, you're going to get this negative i squared is going to give you a 1. So it's going to be pi minus i times ln square root of pi squared plus 1 minus pi, which gives you the cosine of cosine of z equals negative 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.